Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Namaste and a very warm welcome to yet another session in our Weekend with Wisdom series. Let's begin this session with an invocation. Om. Sahana Vavatu. Sahano Bhunatu Sahaviyam Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadhi Tamas Tuma Vid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om In this series, we have been uh, discussing a very interesting, insightful topic, Vivaham, Importance and Procedure. Uh, we met uh, morning for the first session where we discussed about some of the importance and the procedural aspects of Vivaham. And now uh, in the second session, we will be uh, delving into a little more into the procedures and then discussing about the lives of ideal couples to learn uh, what was their attitude and their approach to Vivaham. So uh, we have with us Bhuneshwari Ji, who is taking us through this uh, really, really interesting talk. So I welcome you to take over the session, Bhuneshwari Ji. Over to you. Thank you, Hariji. And namaskarams to all the audience present here. We will have a recapsule of what we saw in the morning session and then plunge into the, the newer sections. So in the morning, we, we had a look about what is Vivaham, the vitality of Vivaham, how Vivaha helps us in attaining the four Purusharthas, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. In the Dharma section, we saw that we have three creditors, Deva, Pitra and the Rishis and we have to marry to repay the debt to the Devas and Pitrus. And then how it helps us in attaining the Artha. Bhaskaram Ichet, Arogyam Bhaskarati Ichet, Shriyam Ichet, Hutashana, and how it fulfills the Kama Purushartha, ultimately leading to Moksha. After this, we saw the importance, uh, the procedures of the uh, uh, Apastamba Maharishi's Sutrams, which is applicable to Krishna Yajurveda, Taitriya Shakha. We had a glimpse about the five major rituals, Vagdanam, Chapradanam, Chavaranam, Pani, Bedanam, Saptapadi, Iti, Panchango, Vara, Vivaha, Parikirtitaha. And we also saw the importance of Pani, Grahanam and Saptapadi. Now, actually, Vivaham is a five-day project. We will, dis we will just list out the important rituals in this five-day project and understand that this five-day project, actually, which was done in the olden days, has now been shortened to just two days or two and a half days for the reasons best known. So we will have a look at one or more of these important rituals. The first day, as discussed earlier, starts with the Vratam, Kanda Vratam and Samavartanam in the morning, Nishchidartam and Janavasam in the evening. Now, the day of marriage, it commences with the Varapreshanam. Varapreshanam, here, the bridegroom sends two Brahmins asking him to search for a suitable girl for him. But this activity has already been done because the Nishchidartha has been 
uh, finalized in the evening itself, the previous evening itself. So this is more of a formality and an opportunity to recite the appropriate mantras. So after the varapreshanam is done, the bridegroom is found and now the bride is also there. Everything is fine right now. Suddenly, there is this urge in the, in the bridegroom to take up sannyasashrama. And how is this? Because after Samavartanam, the previous morning, this bridegroom is released from Brahmacharya Ashrama. He is released from Brahmacharya Ashrama, but not yet entered Grastha Ashrama. So he is basically hovering between the Brahmacharya Ashrama and Grastha Ashrama, not being even either one. It's basically like Trishanku who Iva Antrali Tishtha. Trishanku wanted to go to the heaven with his own body and he asked Vishwamitra to do it for him. Vishwamitra with all his powers sent him up. But suddenly Indra stopped him from uh, coming towards the, the Swarga Loka Dwara and then he was hanging mid-air, not in Swarga, not in Bhuloka. So the, the bridegroom is in such a situation. He's neither a Brahmachari now nor a Grahasthan. So what does he do? He finally he decides, I am going to take up Sanyas Ashrama and he starts his uh, tour towards Kashi. So there commences Kashi Yatra. So in Kashi Yatra, typically this bridegroom, he has this umbrella with him. He has his walking stick, book, sandals, slippers, etc. and etc. For, for, for comforting him on his tour to Kashi, on his way to Kashi. He's barely two steps from the mantap entrance. He's confronted by the father of the girl. And those two steps are also decided typically by the photographers and videographers who, who just want the right capture of the emotions. So the father comes and says, the father of the bride says the, 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 impend, the, the potential saint, he says, sir, please don't take up uh, sannyasa ashrama. You know, I'm ready to offer my daughter as a bride to you. You take up grahastha ashrama, leave this idea of kashi. So you take up grahastha ashrama and... In symbolizing his confirmation, he gives two coconuts to the groom. And the groom then hand over, uh, hands over this coconut to his father. So this is the Kashi Yatra. This is nothing but a planned drama. Because it is decided that the, the boy is going to get married to the girl. But, but at least uh, there is another chance given to the bridegroom if he really wants to go to Kashi for his sannyasa. After the Kashi Yatra, we have the much awaited exchange of garlands said as Malay Matadil. Here, the uncles of the bride and the bridegroom have an important role to play. Only exchanging of garlands is the is the Shastrokta ritual here. The other the other things are just for fun and frolic, and it's just a culturally imbibed ritual. So here the the mamas have, have got a pivotal role to play. Most of the mamas, before their niece or nephew's uh, marriage, they would be hitting the gyms. And suddenly there would be a big business flourishing for the, the gym owners. And if we, if we make a close analysis of what's the re major reason behind, we would say, it is on my shoulders that my nephew will be sitting on. My nephew is about 105 kilos right now, 35 plus years old. And I am quite old right now. But still, I have to come and flex my muscles, right? So I am training, I'm, I'm, I'm trained in this gym now so that it is easier for me on the day of the marriage of my nephew. In olden days, it used to be a fun and frolic activity and it used to be easy for the mamas also because they, were, they used to be kids and used to be uh, a very asan kam for the mamas to take their nephew and niece on their shoulders. But now, he says, the mama says, at least you should go and reduce your weight. You are not doing. So let me go and improve my strength. And even the onlookers, they are not silent. They will keep cheering. Mm, higher and higher, lift higher and higher. So both the bride and the bridegroom sitting on the shoulders of their mamas, they exchange garlands. This is one really fun activity, which made marriage really uh, a much awaited event in everybody's life. And after this uh, exchange of garlands, we have another ritual known as the swinging, unjal. In this, the bride and the bridegroom are made to sw sit in a beautifully decorated swing. And then uh, people, uh, all the ladies of the household, they take the upper hand in conducting this session. This swing session is basically to ward off any evil. The ladies, they make 
rice balls colored rice balls this is known as pachipidi suttudal they take the rice balls and do something like this and in their sheer excitement of warding of evil they throw it at great speed even beating bowler ashwin ravichandra and who knows on who said it is going to come and fall but if it is a rice ball it's still fine because in many sampradayas it is not a rice ball it is a coconut so it is better people arrange for an ambulance to be in handy in case of any coconut breakings after the swinging ritual uh, the swing ritual is over now we have the kanyakadanam so in this kanyakadanam the father keeps takes the hand of his daughter places it on the hand of the bridegroom pours the water and he utters the three pravaras that is the three ancestors of the bride of the bride blesses the bride with good progeny and good married life and so thus concludes the kanyakadanam that is the second ritual so varapreshanam starts with varapreshanam and then we have kashi yatra then exchange of garlands then the swing ritual and then we have kanyakadanam after this we have agni pratishthapanam following which we have madhuparka and then samikshanam what is samikshanam samikshanam is looking at the bride and the bridegroom the bridegroom is asked to look so he need not steal chances or steal a few seconds to look at his bride he is like look very nicely at her you have full freedom keep looking at her ha huh? so the bridegroom looks at his bride and the bride keeps looking at her uh, bridegroom after samikshanam we have yugachhidra sthapanam following which we have abhishekah customarily abhishekah in abhishekah the bridegroom has to pour water on the bride but today it is only performed very simply as just sprinkling water on the bride and after this the bridegroom gives new clothes to his to be bride that is vastra dharana after receiving the new clothes the new sari from from the var she retires into her apartments to drape the new sari and afterwards we have the much awaited mangalya dharana this mangalya dharana in during this mangalya dharana the shloka which is uttered is mangalyam tantuna nena mama jeevana hetuna kanthe badhnami shubhage tvam jeeva sharada shatam it is not actually a mantra it is only a shloka it is not actually uh, it is not the conclusive ritual of the wedding it doesn't solemnize the completion of wedding what solemnizes the completion of that says vivaha is complete but still this is an indispensable part of every vivaham so thus mangalya dharanam take place what is the meaning of this mangalya dharana shloka with this auspicious thread i tie around your neck i will tie this auspicious thread around your neck so that we both may live together happily and see a hundred autumn seasons meaning let us both live together happily for 100 years so there ends mangalya dharana after which we have yoktra sannahanam here the bridegroom takes the darba and ties it around the waist of the bridegroom a waist of the bride as a girdle we have then mukhantam and then comes the important panigrahanam so panigrahanam we saw the how crucial panigrahanam is most of the times in all the vivahams the priest would say you can come and take photo with the var and vadhu but do not give them handshake do not congratulate them by giving your hand just give congratulations orally that's it no handshaking because the panigrahana is in is in continuation it cannot be you cannot come and disturb it so the hand of the bridegroom is in the hand of the bride and vice versa they cannot leave away their hands for anyone else's purpose so after the pani grahanam we have the saptapadi which completes the marriage there is a beautiful shloka which says nodakena navachava kanyayaha patirishyate pani grahana samskarat sapta patitvam saptame pade it is not by the oral promise that happens in nischadartha it is not by that that marriage is complete it is not by the kanyadanam also that the marriage is complete it is only after the pani grahanam and after the completion of the seventh step is the marriage completed so saptapadi is the conclusive ritual of a marriage and this is well proved and understood and after that we have vivaha homaha 
Next we have Ashma Ropanam. What is this Ashma Ropanam? Treading on the millstone. Having walked seven steps, the Var and the Vadhu climb onto the uh, the stone called Ammi in Tamil, the treading the the millstone, and the Var he he inserts this toe ring into the uh, the second toe of his bride. So this is Ashma Ropanam. After this we have larger homam. In this larger homam, the bride offers the puffed rice as ahuti into the sacrificial fire with her husband for the longevity of her of her of both of them and their and the fruitful married life this larger homa this larger that is this puffed rice has got a lot of significance as we can see in ganesha ganapati atharva shirshaha yo lajehi yajati sa vidyaman bhavati whoever offers this puffed rice as ahuti for ganesha he becomes a very big vidwan he becomes a very learned scholar scholar person after the we, after this we have the parikramanam that is circumambulating the the sacred fire jayadi homam and yoktra vimochanam following this we have the pathi prayana mantras that is the marriage would have taken place in a kalyana mandapam from the kalyana mandapam to the house of the bridegroom there has to be mantras uttered all along the way so as a usual as it happens there is only uh, gossips and rumors being talked about all along the way but there are mantras to be chanted the way from the mandapa to the house of the bridegroom after entering entering the house there we have the pravesha homaha and after doing the pravesha homaha there is charma ropanam what is charma ropanam cooking in that homa agni is called charma ropanam and then in the evening we have dhruva darshanam dhruva darshanam is the the seeing of the star known as dhruva along with dhruva darshanam there is arundhati and vasishta darshanam too because arundhati and vasishta lived as the ideal couple the newly married couples are shown these stars for for uh, for treading and following their steps following that we have agneya sthali pakam and then aupasana arambha gandharva raja puja gandharva raja utthapanam and then shesha homaha so we know what is agneya sthali pakam and uh, we also we have also seen about aupasanam so aupasanam is the the five minute ritual in the morning and evening one has to do after marriage and one important thing in this aupasanam is that the husband asks can i give this ahuti he asks his wife and the wife only if she wishes she will say juhudhi so she has to give her consent to whatever the husband asks so both of them has to work both of them will have to work in complete consensus only and the husband cannot be in one direction and the, the wife go in another direction and it doesn't end with the vivaha upasana it will continue forever in all the decisions and actions both of them take after the upasana we have gandharva raja puja gandharva raja utthapanam and shesha homa any balance homa is left that is known as shesha homa so with this we are completing the rituals that spread across five days there are a lot of in uh, nuances here and there again number of small small actions to be performed so that is why it takes five days to complete a vivaham having seen the procedures we will also have a look about the post marriage responsibilities that have been ordained for this couple we saw that the couple has to perform aupasana yes aupasana is there and after the performance of aupasana apart from aupasana we have to perform that the the householder along with his wife has to perform the pancha maha yagnas what are these pancha maha yagnas deva yagna pitri yagna rishi yagna manushya yagna and bhuta yagna we have seen about deva yagna and pitri yagna what is deva yagna performing yagnas and saying swaha and giving the ahuti to that particular devata is known as deva yagna pitri yagna is doing shraddha and tarpana we have seen about that even if it has become difficult in today's world to do all these yagnas all of the humanity can at least utter this shloka देवताभ्य पितृभ्यश्च महायोगिभ्य नमस्वधाय स्वाहाय निमे नमो नम दे कैन डेफिनेटली अटर द श्लोका एवरीडे इट इज अ मैंडेट 
they have to do this so that we 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 show our we offer our salutations to the devas and our pitrus it is very easy also to do the yagna it, it may not be an elaborate one you just have to say the name of the deva and say swaha and offer at least one darba done deva yagna is done and for pitri yagna tell swadha and give water that's it pitri yagna is also performed so there are ways where we can smartly handle things even if we are not in a position to do it so after deva yagna and pitri yagna we have rishi yagna so Uh, the rishi yagna is basically the the rishi the the brahma yagna which has to be performed to discharge the debt that we owe to the rishis so what is the debt this is an intellectual debt so it has to be removed intellectually so we have to take troubles in doing veda dhyana rechant the mantras that have already been learnt during the veda dhyana kala and again teach it to the next generation this is the brahma yagna that has to be performed what is bhuta yagna bhuta yagna is what we do on a daily basis there is no household in this in the bharat bhumi that misses on this bhuta yagna that is serving the crows first before we take our first serving so the cooked rice is first given to the crows to feed on and after the baki the shesha annam is only served for the family members and this is called bhuta yagna which has to be done next we have the manushya yagna manushya yagna is nothing but what since eons have been told to us atithyam atithi satkaram is manushya yagna so atithi satkaram involves three basic aspects one is offering water and food for the person for the atithi and giving him space giving him good accommodation to rest and pleasing that person with good kind words so these are the three aspects of hospitality and it was uh, an indispensable part in the day to day routine of many couples so they used to wait at the veranda of their household see if any person would accept their hospitality and wait for them and ask them invite them with good pleasing words offer them what all they had and then they had their food so this was the the much um, uh, enviable routine of our forefathers we have no doubt on this because the vedas say atithi devo bhava after uh, acharya devo bhava it is atithi devo bhava so we are able to understand the importance and the weightage that has been given to good hospitality atithi satkaram after the pancha maha yagnas so basically these are the duties so do upasana do the pancha maha yagnas apart from this juhudi aspect that the woman gets to wield her rights during which we have another mantra that says murdhanam pratyuraroha the bridegroom says to the girl come sit on my head so it is not in a literal sense and not in a sarcastic sense also murdha means head so if the girl has to come and sit on his head that means that she takes control of his thinking she takes the control of the buddhi and she becomes the shakti of his buddhi and that is what he asks her to do you guide me into the correct path so there are beautiful many places where the women have to play a major role in their vivaham it's not that just follow the husband no fall off husband is asking you to guide him na then we have to do those it is uh, it is our it is our right and our privilege also next we have i think uh, we can do one beautiful mangalam for the procedure of vivaham now we can dwell into the stories of the great and ideal couples let us start with nala damayanti nala damayanti is uh, they are an amazing and enviable couple but they are they constantly face problems even before their marriage so nala was in the way to the swayamvara of damayanti but the gods also wanted to marry damayanti so what did the gods do they stopped nala and said we will give you special powers to get into the antapura of damayanti but after getting there you have to say and convince Dam- damayanti to marry any one of the gods but damayanti is now already in love with nala anyways he agrees so he with those powers with those special powers he enters the quarters of damayanti and its tight security and the moment the moment damayanti sees nala 
she's awestruck by his unmatched brilliance and she says aho rupam aho kanti aho dhairya mahatmanah koyam devonu yakshonu gandharvonu bhavishyati my goodness what great brilliance what a tejas what what a bravery man who are you hey great mahatman who are you are you a deva are you a yaksha are you a gandharva she doesn't even ask him if you are a human being she thinks that how can ever a human being possess such great tejas but yeah nala is full of exuberance and resplendence and then nala introduces himself and also says the purpose of his visit see i am i'm nala but then uh, i have come here as an agent of the gods so they have asked you to marry any one of them she say, she says okay fine so you have done your job i will take care of whatever is to be done ahead afterwards nala leaves and then comes the swayamvara of damayanti now the gods have played an elaborate ruse to trick damayanti into marrying any one of them all of them took the form of nala because they know that damayanti is in love with nala now how will damayanti identify nala amongst so many uh, dupe nalas so there are differentiating factors between the devas and humans number 1 the devas do not blink their eyes the humans blink their eyes the devas feet do not touch the do not touch the ground but our humans feet are firmly placed on the ground third the devas don't have shadows humans have shadows so with using her intelligence and all these differentiating factors she was easily able to spot out the original nala and garlanded him now it really led to the anger of all the other devas and shani wanted to avenge his insult and waited for the right moment to catch nala so once what happened nala lost the game of dice just like how yudhishthira lost the game of dice and lost his kingdom he retired into the forest and then nala and damayanti got separated he was bitten by this venomous snake karkotaka all he lost all his brilliance and tejas he became completely black from head to toe and then he worked as a cook in the kingdom of raja rituparna actually nala is a, is a in today's marriage marriage market jargons is a perfect marriage material guy this guy surpasses everybody in handsomeness is a huge handsome hunk he's a greatest charioteer he drives the chariot at lightning speed there is no one parallel uh, which who can parallel him in riding in driving the chariot and also he is an amazing cook what else does anybody need i think here if i continue about nala the the husbands might uh, be at danger huh so let us just continue with the story and not with praises of nala so nala being a great cook he enchants the king and uh, he wins the hearts of everybody like uh, to win the heart of someone you have to go through their stomach and so he is very good at that also so nala is working as a cook in the kingdom of raja rituparna now now damayanti wants to find the whereabouts of nala so what does she do she asks her father to arrange for a second swayamvara and the date of the swayamvara is so fixed that only an expert charioteer like nala can reach the place of damayanti's father's kingdom in such a short period so now rituparna also wants to participate who is will he ask he will ask nala so nala also offer see i am a very good charioteer i can take you at lightning speed ek chutki mein aa aapko wahan pahuncha sakta hu he says that and then rituparna with the help of nala he reaches damayanti swayamvara only to find out that it was uh, a way to find out where the where nala's whereabouts were then damayanti and nala they reunite rituparna is compensated with good gifts and now here rituparna teaches nala the art of akshahridayam the art of dice game and nala in turn teaches him the ashwahridayam the art of driving the chariot so now having learned the game of dice very well he goes back and plays the game of dice wins back his kingdom and returns back to all his glory both damayanti and nala have suffered inexplainable sorrow and grief so shani appears in front of them and says we both have done a fabulous job you have braved 
all odds and obstacles i wish to grant a boon to you you ask for it and nala says whoever recalls our story may they never be troubled by you so there goes the shloka karko takasya na agasya damayantya nalasya cha rituparnasya rajarshe he kirtanam kalinashanam this kirtan of the story of rituparna the the king the sage the damay damayanti and nala and the snake karkotaka will dispel all our sorrow now here there is an important and key role played by a swan before even the swayambara of damayanti is uh, is conducted nala is the king of the kingdom nishadha there he happens to catch a swan from his garden the swan pleads freedom please let me go and also nala releases but it was not his obligation nala could have had this one but out of sheer compassion he released the swan and then the swan says for this favor i will go as a mediator to damayanti and sing all praises of you and so does the swan uh, do accordingly the swan goes to the apartments of damayanti and sings in full glory all the praises in length and breadth and and full volumes of nala's handsomeness nala's uh, beautiful uh, uh, beautiful skills very handy and practical skills all his virtues and and his gunas and damayanti goes head over heels for him just by listening about nala just like rukmini now in turn damayanti also sends her agent to nala who goes and conveys the invitation to damayanti's swayambara before all this happens before even the story of nala and damayanti commence we should understand that this swan is not just a swan he is a rishi actually incarnate incarnated to reunite these both so nala and damayanti were actually husband and wife in their previous birth both were hunter and huntress they once happened to accommodate a rishi for whose protection that hunter had to give up his own life now the rishi felt uh, guilty in some way or the other that i am responsible for the death of this um, uh, sinless hunter so i have to do something for them what he does he says okay i will take a rebirth i will be born as a swan and reunite these two so the underlying theme in the story of nala and damayanti is that the marital bond isn't just for a birth it is panning over janmas so after uh, recalling the story of nala and damayanti let us be rest assured that uh, shani will never come near us let us say good bye bye to shani next we have the story of harishchandra and his wife all of us are well aware of the the karma nishtha the satya vrata and satya nishtha of harishchandra and his wife harishchandra once owed a huge debt to vishwamitra to repay which he had to give up his own kingdom to the extent that he sold his son he sold his wife and at the end he sold his own self now he sold his own self to whom to a manager of a cremation ground so he was asked to work as an executor now there came a time when his wife was awarded a death punishment for no fault of hers and was to be executed at the hands of her own husband harishchandra now harishchandra is in a great dilemma any man's satyavrata and satyanishtha would now in this poignant moment would take a back seat but no not for harishchandra he went ahead took the sword and beheaded his own wife only to see the sword turn as a beautiful garland around her neck seeing the devotion that the wife had for the husband so the wife didn't leave harishchandra so today if uh, if our partners lack something that we once cherished in them we find that uh, no he doesn't charm me anymore and then we just uh, see our own ways and and part ways but here both of them are are supporting each other wife supports harishchandra and harishchandra supports his wife and harishchandra was able to do all these things only with the sheer encouragement of his wife had the wife said no i am leaving you then he wouldn't have been able to repay that debt forever he would have been a debtor 
seeing the the satya vrata and satya nishtha of both these people all the gods bless them and vishwamitra even bestows upon him 50 percentage of his spiritual powers now there is the what is the phala of being very truthful satya pratishthayam kriya phala shrayatvam the fruit of being very truthful is that even without doing the karma the karma phala can be reaped so here the harishchandra was just remaining truthful he did not do the yagnas or whatever has to be done to attain the spiritual powers that vishwamitra attained but didn't he get 50 percentage of those and yes so we have to be extremely truthful to whatever we have taken up to whatever our responsibilities are and thus teaches thus is the moral of the story harishchandra and his wife another story that we will have a look at is jayadeva and his wife padmavati jayadeva is the saint poet and the the author of the ashtapadis of radha and krishna which extols their their divine sports so now in a discussion it once happened so that padmavati was in discussion his wife padmavati was in discussion with the queen of that kingdom she said that any chaste wife when she hears the death of her husband will give up her life now the queen wanted to test this so what did she do she orchestrated and staged a fake news about the death of her husband jayadeva the moment she heard the death of her husband she immediately gave up her life and seeing padmavati lying lifeless for no reason <laughs> jayadeva used all his spiritual powers and brought her back to life and there go you have padmavati back in all flesh and spirit again so this these were the spiritual powers both had not just what jayadeva possessed but also the power of padmavati to give up her life at her will so this was the power of bhishmacharya he could give up his life whenever he wanted and uh, at the end of the kurukshetra war he waited for ratha saptami to give up his his life so even here the pativrata naris have the power to decide when to die their life their prana is in their own control another short story we will have is about lopa mudra and agastya agastya is one of the sapta rishis lopa mudra she served agastya with all her heart even though agastya was once affected with leprosy so the the sankalpa of being together at all times was beautifully illustrated and lived and showed by lopa mudra and agastya next is another yet another interesting story is of sukanya and chevana maharishi so sukanya is a young bright curious girl and she is very happy in her uh, in her adventures and plays and etc chevana is a old maharishi doing tapas what happens so is that he is so engrossed in his tapas that there is an ant hill built over him but only his eyes are sparkling through the ant hill so sukanya becomes very curious what is this this something twinkling here and that too it is double in number so she pokes at that bright pole and it so happens that it is the both eyes of chevana maharishi now chevana maharishi is blinded what will he do so sukanya to make good for her fault she offers herself as a as a bride to chevana even though the age gap is enormous but she continues to serve him with full heart and for her virtue and for her devotion chevana is now transformed into a into a very handsome young person and both of them live a very fruitful happy married life and so is the story of sukanya and chevana maharishi all of us are also aware of the story of savitri and satyavan we also had a quick gist about it in the morning savitri she once sees a man in the forest and decides that that person is going to be my husband but then later on she is warned by narada see you have chosen fine but that man is going to die in a year's time is that fine for you she said i will not change my mind once decided is decided he is my husband forever shall he be my husband and she goes on to marry him and for the next one year she performs severe austerities uh, and observes all the pativrata dharma rituals but on the fateful day 
Yama comes and takes away the life of Satyavan. But Savitri is no ordinary woman. So Yama comes as, so she is, she is able to view Yama. Usually Yama Dutas come to take our lives away. But for Satyavan, Yama himself arrived. And this Yama was also visible to Savitri. So she followed Yama wherever he went. Now Yama just wanted to get rid of Savitri. He keeps telling her, no, this is not the place for you. You go back, you go back. But she doesn't listen. She simply follows Yama. And then she says that, see, we have walked all these steps. We have been companion in this whole journey. So I am your friend right now. You can't just chase me away. You can't drive me away. Then Yama says, okay, fine. I will give you three boons. She asks for the three boons and the third boon being progeny for herself. In a hurry, Yama say, Chalo, take it, fine. Now just leave me. But then, it then realizes to Yama, oh my God, how is she going to have progeny if I take Satyavan with myself? So Yama is now compelled to return back Satyavan's life to Savitri and that's how Savitri won back the life of her husband from Yama. Here, the life of Satyavan and Savitri depicts the, the, the firmness in one's decision. So Savitri, though she knew the fateful day of her husband, she didn't withdraw back on her decision. She didn't desire that, okay, let go of him. I will marry someone else with a long life. No, Once decided is decided. However be it, I will brave all challenges. And she did do that. Now, after the, the stories... We will now have another beautiful story of the, the Shakti of Pativrata Dharma. So this is from Mahabharata. Like Bhagavad Gita and Uddhava Gita, we have Vyadha Gita. So there is this young Brahmachari who does severe tapas. So he gains a lot of spiritual power and prowess. Once it so happened that a crane came and it pooped on him. Out of sheer anger, he just stared at the crane and it was burned to ashes. He was quite happy, pleasantly happy. Said, oh, fine, I've got powers. It's working good. And as is the duty prescribed to a brahmachari, he goes door to door asking for arms. So at one door, he knocks. He asks, Bhavati Bhiksham Dehi. Many people might get confused here, like uh, thinking, Bhavati to be the verb form of the verb dhatu, bhu. But it is actually the Sambodhana Prathama. Hey, silent here. Hey, Bhavati, bhiksham dehi. Oh, lady, please, please give me arms. So it is the Sambodhana Prathama that's hidden here. So he asks for arms, but then he knows nothing called patience. This lady inside the house was serving her husband some dal and chutney, etc., whatever he liked. So she says, okay, just wait for some time. I will finish my chores and come back. But then this guy, he's very impatient and he keeps asking for arms. After finishing her work, after some time, she goes with arms to that beggar. That is the Brahmachari. But now he stares and glares at her, gives her a death stare. Smilingly, she says, Did you think me to be a crane? Don't mistake me for that. Huh? Suddenly, he's flabbergasted. My goodness. How does she know what happened somewhere else? That's something that happened somewhere with somebody. How did she know that I was the one who burnt the crane to ashes? But then, yeah, he understands that this is the Shakti that a Pativrata Nari gets when she follows and observes the Pativrata Dharma. And she also guides this person. She says, nearby, there is this Vyadhan who lives. Who is this Vyadhan? A butcher who lives nearby. Whatever knowledge that you want to receive, you are awaiting for, you better go to him and learn. And so does this Brahmachari. Makes his, embarks on his journey to go and meet that butcher. And his conversation is the butcher, with the butcher is, it will unfold into a, uh, another long story. So there might be a question now. So, uh, okay, it is said for women that, yeah, you have to be a Pativrata Nari, this, that, all this, fine. So are the men let scot-free? Is nothing there for men? It's not like that. 
the men have to be obedient and they have to take commands the ray have to report to their gurus so there is a hierarchy there are checks and balances very well there are variations in every relationship and everybody is also given that freedom to carve and work in their own niche so wherever there is the independence for uh, for the patni she will be on her own and where she has to take uh, suggestions and advice or even orders from her husband she's going to take and so does it apply for the husband so where he can function on his own he will do it and again he will have to report to his guru so at all levels we have a uh, vigilance so we need not worry that oh it is only the woman who is bound always this that and they have they are just led without anything you know they have also the men they are bound in a very rigid regiment it's very uh, we will feel, we'll find that oh my god this is too difficult but still they do it veda dhyana is not an easy task full day 24 just 14 hours a day for all 15 years they have to sit and and do the veda dhyana sincerely and they cannot afford to forget even one mantra none of us will remember whatever we learned at fourth standard or fifth standard any question answer that we would have by hearted but it is necessary for all these vatus to remember for all these veda dhyayis to rem- for all the the people who have done this veda dhyana to remember every single mantra so everybody has got their share of duties everybody have everybody has got their share of challenges so we should not be uh, sitting and uh, comparing these things simply follow what has been given like how ramakrishna paramahamsa once uh, gave a beautiful example he said that there is this flourishing fruit bearing uh, mango tree a very intelligent person what he will do he will come and start counting the number of leaves in that mango tree because he will do his analysis he is such an intelligent guy but then a layman what does he do he will come and he will see that juicy amazing beautiful mango and he would love to have it and straight within a single in a single shot he goes for that mango but then this intelligent man he wastes his time and also his energy in simply counting of the leaves so we don't have to do that analysis the rishis have already done that analysis derived formulas and it has stood the test of time and we have testimonies given by our gurus and acharyas so in today we if we simply follow what has been given to us by our parents so what our parents have received they have received from their grand from our grandparents we are receiving from it we are receiving the same thing from our parents and even if we want to question it we ask many times there is this question called why why this and why that this question has to be asked with the intention of knowing the answer and not with the intention of disrespecting it or throwing muck at the parampara of our forefathers you know we want the ancestral property we want the jewels of our grandmother all that we want but then we will want that also and at the same time if we disrespect our forefathers we are living by double standards and and the living in a double standard life is is cheating our own self so it is not the right way of living so let us try understanding small small things initially and then we have to do our swadhyayana so do your self study and uh, it will unfold many many revelations unto us so i think let us uh, uh, conclude by looking at the mahad ashirvadam that the dampatis will receive tomorrow is a beautiful uh, muhurta day many uh, couples will be any uh, to be bride and bridegrooms will be getting married we wish them an amazing married life ahead and an advance mahad ashirvadam mahad ashirvadam starts with swasti mantrarthaha satyasa phala santviti bhavantaha mahantaha anugrahantu so this is the blessing that states that let all the mantras that have blessed this couple fructify right now अनयोर दंपत्योहो वेदोक्तम दीर्घम आयुष्यम भूयात इति भवन्तः महान्तः अनुग्रहन्तु लेट दिस कपल बी ब्लेसेड विथ लॉन्ग लाइफ दैट हैज बीन ऑर्डेन्ड इन द वेदास व्हाट इज दिस लॉन्ग लाइफ दैट हैज बीन ऑर्डेन्ड इन द वेदास शतम जीवेम लिव फॉर अ 100 इयर्स इति भवन्तः महान्तः अनुग्रहन्तु सो विल द एल्डर्स एंड द ग्रेट पीपल ब्लेस द कपल्स वी हैव तल्लग्न अपेक्षया आदित्यादीना नवाना ग्रहाण 
ಆನುಕೂಲ್ಯಂ ಭೂಯಾತ್ ಇತಿ ಭವಂತಃ ಮಹಾಂತಃ ಅನುಗೃಹಂತು ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿವಾಹ ಮುಹೂರ್ತ ಲೆಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಆದಿತ್ಯಾಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ನೈನ್ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿ ಫೇವರಬಲ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಕಪಲ್ ಏ ಎ ಗ್ರಹ ಶುಭೇತರ ಸ್ಥಾನೇಶು ಸ್ಥಿತ ತಾಂ ಗ್ರಹಾಂ ಶುಭಸ್ಥಾನ ಫಲವಾಪ್ತಿರಸ್ತಿ ಭವಂತಃ ಮಹಾಂತಃ ಅನುಗೃಹಂತು ಇಫ್ ಇನ್ ಎನಿ ಕೇಸ್ ದಿ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಫೇವರಬಲ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಶುಭಸ್ಥಾನ ಲೆಟ್ ದಮ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ದೋಸ್ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇ ವೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಶುಭಸ್ಥಾನ ಗೇ ಗ್ರಹ ಶುಭ ಶುಭಸ್ಥಾನೇಶು ಸ್ಥಿತ ತಾಂ ಗ್ರಹಾಂ ಅತಿಶಯನ ಶುಭ ಫಲ ಪ್ರದಾತೃತ್ವ ಭೂಯಾತ್ ಇತಿ ಭವಂತಃ ಮಹಾಂತಃ ಅನುಗೃಹಂತು ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಇನ್ ಗುಡ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ in their favorable positions let them provide benefits in multifold times anayor dampatyo ho ayur balam yasho varcha pashavah siddhir lakshmihi kshama kantihi sadguno anando nitya shrihi nitya mangalam iti etesham sada abhivriddhir bhuyat iti bhavantaha mahantaha anugrahanto tathastu let this couple be blessed with ಆಯು ಲಾಂಜ್ಲಿವಿಟಿ ಬಲಂ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂಥ್ ವಿಗರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಮಿನ ಯಶೋ ವರ್ಚ ಆಲ್ ಆಲ್ ಫೇಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪೆರಿಟಿ ಪಶವ ಕೌಸ್ ಸೊ ಲೈಕ್ ವಿ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಸಾ ದಿ ಕೌಸ್ ಶೀಪ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೋಡ್ಸ್ ವೆರ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಟು ಮೆಷರ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ರಿಚ್ನೆಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ರಿಚ್ ಸಿದ್ಧಿರ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಹಿ ಲೆಟ್ ದಂ ಬಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಕ್ಷಮ ಲೆಟ್ ದಂ ಬಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ forbearance tolerance sadguno anando let them have really great virtues nitya shrihi nitya mangalam let there be eternal prosperity let the showers of ma lakshmi always be there nitya mangalam let there be eternal auspiciousness in the lives of these dampati and not just that iti etesham sada abhivriddhir bhuyat it means that all these blessings should constantly keep multiplying and growing so it means that they are already existent and it is the growth that is blessed here next we have imau dampati dhanavantau dhanyavantau putravantau mitravantau hrimantau dhimantau ojasvinau manasvinau yashasvinau tapasvinau tarasvinau shantimantau dantimantau ಕಾಂತಿ ಮಂತೌ ಶಾಂತಿ ಮಂತೌ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಮಂತೌ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಂತೌ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಮಂತೌ ವೃದ್ಧಿ ಮಂತೌ ಆಯುಷ್ ಮಂತೌ ಆರೋಗ್ಯವಂತೌ ಸತ್ಯವಂತೌ ಹೃದಯ ಭವನೌ ಬಹುಧಾನ್ಯೌ ಮನುಜಮಾನ್ಯೌ ಚ ಇತಿ ಏತೆ ಇತಿ ಭವಂತಃ ಮಹಾಂತಃ ಅನುಗೃಹಂತು ಲೆಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಪಲ್ ಬಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಧನವಂತೌ ಧಾನ್ಯವಂತೌ ಲೆಟ್ ದಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ರಿಚಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ದಮ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಅಬಂಡನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ let them have a lot of children let them be blessed with innumerable friends and family and relatives let them have great fame let them do tapas what is for what we are doing this vivaham yagnyo danam tapas chaiva pavanani manishinam yagnya dana and tapa purifies a man how can one do yagnya it is only by vivaha so we have to purify ourselves by doing vivaha for tapas we need to do vivaha let them be blessed with truthfulness shakti satyavanto bhaktimanto let them be devoted let them have great health hail and healthy life let them live long let them have a beautiful residence hridya bhavana manuja manyav cha bhuya astam let all these be instantly showered on them iti bhavantaha mahantaha anugrahantu so so be the, so the elders and the the great people bless them this way these were the these are the blessings that every couple will get in their marriage and now we will also have a look at the divya dampatis whose virtues these people have to the couple have to cultivate in their marital life imau dampati bharati brahmano iva dirghayushav this dampati has to be like Uh, saraswati and brahma who lived for a lo- who live for a long life lakshmi narayanau eva niroga sharirau like mahavishnu and mahalakshmi they should live a ill free life uma maheshwarau eva nitya samachetau like parvati and parameshwara they should always have consensus in mind word and action 
Shachi Purandarao Eva Samastaishwariya Sampanna. Like Indra and his consort Indrani, they should be blessed with all the riches of all these worlds. Rati Kandarpao Eva Pungkhanu Pungkha Prema Baddhau. Like Rati and Manmatha, so should their love between them be. Anusu Yatri Eva Sarvaloka Sammanya Sadapatyao. Like Anusuya and Atri, they should be worthy of respect of all the four worlds. Anusuya uh, deserves a special mention here because with her power of her Pativrata Dharma, she turned Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva into crying babies and nursed them. Draupadi, Yudhishthira, Eva, she stays Jana Samrita. Like Draupadi and Yudhishthira, they be blessed with very good, obedient and truthful progeny. Lopa Mudra, Kumbha Sambhava Eva, like Lopa Mudra and Agastya Maharishi, let them have Shantau, Dantau, Kantau, Bahumitrau, Bahuputrau, Sadhumitrau, Satcharitrau, Jita Janyau, Gata Dainyau, Siddha Kalpau, Jita Kalpau, Cha, Bhuyastham, Iti Bhavantaha Mahantaha, Anugrannantu. Let all the virtues that the couple Lopa Mudra and Agastya possess, let those virtues and blessings be blessed and showered on this couple. So, saying so, I will conclude by, uh, by remembering, by again saluting the Jagan Mata Pita, Parvati and Parameshwara. Vagartha Viva Sampriktav, Vagartha Pratipattaye, Jagatav Pitaro Vande, Parvati Parameshwaro. Thank you, Indika Moksha. Thank you, Hariji, for hosting this wonderful session. It was my greatest pleasure to talk on all the, uh, to talk on Vivaham. It has given us an opportunity to speak about the great and noble souls and also hear about them in this beautiful Sandhya Vandana Vele. So Sandhya Vele is the is a time that nobody should ever miss. It is, it is the absolute time that will reap benefits in multifold quantity. So remembering these Deiva couples at this time is a great blessing to all of us. And I pray for the betterment and welfare of all beings. And thank you. Namaste. Namaskar. Thank you so much, Bhuneshwari ji. And uh, uh, I think it would be really uh, essential to have a follow-up uh, talk series uh, for this particular topic because there is so much more that you have you know you have touched upon but so much more to explore a lot of potential aspects that can be explored so we shall uh, definitely see what are the possibilities of having uh, another talk with you and on behalf of Indika Moksha I would like to extend our gratitude and our sincere uh, thanks for agreeing to do this uh, you know series for us thank you so much Thank you so Very much. Very fortunate. Thank you. Yeah. Let's conclude the, the session with the Shanti Mantra. Om. Shanti Shanti Shanti, shanti hi, Hari hi, Om. Dear viewers, uh, I request all of you to follow us on social media in the uh, you know under the uh, handle Advaita Academy or Indika Moksha Advaita Academy in Facebook and YouTube and Indika Moksha in Twitter. Please uh, follow us on these channels to be updated about the upcoming talks uh, on Advaita Vedanta and also on other topics in Sanatana Dharma. Thank you so much. Uh, meet you all in the next series. Dhanyavad. Shri Guru Bhiyo Namaha.